Um, in 2007, we had the number one record in America. It was called This Is Why I'm Hot by a group called MIMS. Um, I was really pleased to get this number one record. I was less pleased when I got the royalty check. It was $24,000. I went hunting the royalties, and um, while I was hunting the royalties, um, Apple announced their 2007 second quarter, which propelled them to be a $100 billion company, which seems like a long, long, long time ago. In the time since the iPod had uh, been launched, the market cap of Apple had increased from $5 billion to about $100 billion to $300 billion today and the market cap of the music industry had gone down from about uh, $30 billion to my uh, $24,000. It was very, very, very small. It had actually gone down to $12 billion. I decided it was time for me to try and do something about it, and I came up with this model called Beyond Oblivion. What Beyond Oblivion does is fundamentally throws all of the music in the world that we can license, which has been a lot of music, into the cloud, and then we license devices like this um, Samsung uh, phone to play the music. Um, the way that it works from the artist is quite interesting because we pay the artist per play. So all the music in the world is up in the cloud and the artists get paid every time it's play played. What they're paid from is the, license, is the device licenses. So in essence, the device license is a prepayment for the plays that they're going to be on that device. Now, what it does is it frees up the user experience. Unfortunately, there's no um, SD SDMI uh, cable, so I've got this um, person filming every one of my finger strokes, and unfortunately, my fingers are very big. So this could be a very clunky experience, but let's try and launch it. So the first thing that's interesting is that your locker is rather large. My locker is 6,144,000 uh, songs. It increases at 150,000 um, songs, tracks a day as we ingest more and more music. We'll launch with over, over 20 million um, songs. And they are my locker. There is no paywall between me and this music. There is nothing. There's nothing I have to do to access to play this music. It's been prepaid in the device license. My collection is, is divided into two, into two states. Generally, there's my collection on the handset, so I go to artists, and just because we love Adele, I go to Adele, and the first thing you see is that I've got a bunch of orange stuff on the right-hand side. Dark orange means Didn't I give it up? that it's here on the, um, on the device, but Light orange means it's in intelligent cash. What's more interesting is that there are five more songs on this album, and they are in gray. Really doesn't matter to me. I can play them just as if they were part of the, part of what was on the device. So you have a totally seamless integration between what's in the cloud and of course uh, what's on your local device. But in a sense, that's not fascinating. It's just the beginning. What becomes more interesting is we go to the home page and we decide to search for somebody who's really got a collection, like, say, Miles. I told you it was going to get difficult. Miles Davis. And uh, Miles Davis has made a lot of music in his life. And I have all of this music on my handset, all of it. I have 206 Miles Davis albums. I have within this 206 Miles Davis albums, I have 36 bootlegs of Miles Davis, including the legendary uh, Live at the Budokan. Why was Miles Davis estate um, uh, persuaded to license us Live at the Budokan? Quite simply, because they get paid per play. There is no difference in our model between what we pay on a previously ripped so uh, track or a track that's fresh from the cloud. The problem about infinite music, though, is that infinite music, it, the use, utility of it is rather exaggerated. Here I've got 6,144,000 songs in my cloud locker, and I've got about 600 songs on my iPod 
that I've played. I, the average person listens to about 800 songs in a year. We solved this problem, at least we partially solved this problem, through gurus. There are two types of gurus, super gurus, NME, Billboard, people who you respect. You kind of know that the top 100 chart from Billboard will be roughly approximating to the best-selling albums and uh, singles in the United States, apart from the fact that record companies buy their own records occasionally to distort that. But let's go into my profile. I have gurus, and I found a really horrific thing using this. Um, here's my daughter, Ella Kidron. She is in Southern California, and she's published a few playlists on Boink already. And I find out that her great passion in life is country music. And this is extraordinary to me because I never listened to country music in my life. And I found out that she loves this guy, Brad Paisley. I now love this guy, Brad Paisley. Brad Paisley is God. Now what we can do from Brad Paisley, because this is an infinite paywall-free experience, is we can start looking... Oh, sorry about that. I'm going to... I start to find out that this Brad Paisley guy has got a lot of records. He wasn't actually discovered by my daughter. He's been discovered by a lot of people before my daughter. And I can start to search at all the playlists in the system that contain Brad Paisley, which allows me to start looking at new gurus, people who can lead me to Taylor Swift. And so I can simply go around searching this infinite user, um, utility, which we call um, Boink, and discover everything that there is and everything that has been recorded. Now, what's interesting is we've heard a lot of people today talk about rights and the fact that rights are different in the US, the UK, blah, 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 blah. What we did was, because we wanted to have a truly global experience, we licensed, we had one rule in licensing, and that is we only license globally. So everything that's in our collection, whether it's Prince, D'Angelo, whether it's Foster the People, is for the world. We go to India, we license Hungama's li library for the world. There is nothing that we license just for the US. The idea here is that we will truly have a free music experience for the people. So probably the best thing that I can do is leave us with Prince and Free. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's fantastic. And now that you